All right, today I'm working on a 2007 Chevy Uplander. Got my compressor over there. Got some uh, parts. So here is uh, outer tie rods. Got a lot of clunking going on in the front. Uh, sway bar bushings and sway bar links. So that's what I'm gonna be doing today. First thing we're gonna do here is we're gonna jack up the van and uh, put it on a jack. So start off by jacking it up at the pinch point here. Okay, so now I'm sliding jack stand under this part of the frame here. This is what holds the motor and all the front suspension together, so it's pretty strong. Alright, so we got it nice and uh, secure now, so I got a jack stand there on that part of the frame. Jack stand in the center, jack stand on that side, and then as a extra safety precaution, I got two jacks on the pinch welds. Okay, so we got the wheel off now, and what we're gonna be tackling is this outer tie rod, sway bar bushing, you can see the gap there. Obviously that's not supposed to be there. And we're gonna do the sway bar links on both sides. Okay, so the first thing on this outer tie rod is there's a cotter pin at the bottom, so you're going to want to take that out, and then there's a nut holding it on the bottom. Okay, so now once you got this nut loose, what you want to do is you want to back this up so the castle nut is facing downwards, right, and then you don't uh, mess up the thread, and then you just give it a tap, take the nut off, and boom, it's off, just like that. All right, so I got the tie rod sitting over here, push that out of the way. And now I'm working on this extension. So there's a, like a lock nut of sorts on this side. So often what will happen is obviously over time rust and everything, it kind of fuses to the bolt. So when you turn the nut on the outside, it also turns the one on the inside. So if you just get some vice grips on the inside, and since I'm replacing these, I don't really care about crushing the rubber. So get that on there, and now you can get on this nut behind, and you just turn her off. Right, so I got the bolt or nut up off here, and the nut off down there, and now this just comes out pretty easy. That cheater bar. Boom, there you go. All right, so the next thing now is take these two bolts out it's here. BS side. Already loosen them; they're really loose. And once again, you can see that huge gap there. That's a major issue. So yep, so just unscrew these out. This one will come up by hand. And they're pretty long, they go all the way through. Oh, never mind. I was wrong. Usually they go all the way through. Right, so now I've got the bushing pretty much off. I have the tie rod out. I have the uh, link off, or extension, some people call them. Oh, plus there's a link. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this nut back off, this tie rod end. Right, so we're gonna stick it back in. Alright, so I've stuck this back in, and now I'm going to take my two, my wrench here, right, and I'm going to get on this, this lock nut, right, right here, right, so we'll crack that off. Oh, wrong way, wrong head.
All right, so I've got that loose. And then you pull that back out. And now what you want to do is you want to count your turns. So you're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, Holy eleven, crap, it's gonna be hard to get these bushings on. Twelve, so stiff. thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, you take a flat head, pry it, sixteen, seventeen, Take some rust off the sway bar if you want to. 18. 19. So 19 turns on that one. So the other one was 17 and a half, roughly. Alright, so there we go. So we got pretty much everything done right now. Just got to take that last bolt out there, take the old bushing off and then put the new parts on. Okay, so I'm moving back onto assembly. So I got the new bushing in there and you can see the difference. It's not even tight and it's way better. This rubber is a little denser than the other stuff. This stuff's really malleable, but you can see how it's like ovaled out. Definitely a problem. I wouldn't tighten them up till we get the, because they're top and the bottom. Well, it just goes in a certain way, like the, the bottom one goes on the front and the top goes that through the back. All right, so I got the bushing in there. Still needs to be tightened down. I left it a little loose to make it easier to get these uh, sway bar extensions. But now you just do the reverse order. Put your uh, new oh, extensions in. All right, so now I've reattached the sway bar uh, links, right? From the bottom of the sway bar here to the top here and what you do is you can get a small ratchet on the end there and then you use an open end with that and you just tighten her up nice and snug okay so we're putting the uh, new tie rod on so I put this nut on there and now I'm gonna take the new tie rod and I'm gonna count my numbers again right so there's the one I think this one was uh, 19 turns, so I'm going to do 19 turns and then lock that nut at the back. Right, so I've screwed that back on and I've put it back in the hole. And this new set doesn't come with cotter pins, but it comes with nylon uh, lock nuts. I'm just going to put my nut on at the bottom. Bob's your uncle. Right, so I got everything tightened up. I got the two bolts here. They got uh, this adjustment bolt for the outer tie rod done, bolts underneath, and a bolt here, and bolt here for the extensions. So that wraps up that, that, that job, and uh, now I'm just going to throw the tire back on and take her off the jack.